The aftermath of shelling in Idlib province. The building hit appears to be someone's home. Rescue crews look for survivors, but all they find are remains of the victims. Images too graphic to show. The casualties here were among scores of civilians killed in another 24 hours of intense fighting throughout Syria. <laughs> Opposition activists say on Thursday night, government forces bombed the Damascus suburb of Daraya with napalm, a flammable mixture of gel and fuel that's banned for use against civilian targets. The bombs hit Daraya's last remaining hospital. Throughout this conflict, rights groups have accused both sides of using chemical weapons. Neither the government nor rebel groups have ever been held accountable. Elsewhere in Syria, ISIL released video that appears to show a suicide car bombing targeting Kurdish fighters. ISIL claims 30 fighters were killed in the attack that happened just south of Manbij. It was last week when Kurdish militias, fighting as part of the U.S.-backed Syrian Democratic Forces, managed to push ISIL forces out of Manbij, a town ISIL had controlled for more than two years. The suicide bombing targeting Kurdish fighters could be payback and a sign that ISIL can still carry out attacks against its enemies. If there's any positive news over the past 24 hours, it is some new hope for a temporary cessation of hostilities. On Thursday, the Russian Defense Ministry said it was willing to support a UN proposal for a 48-hour pause in fighting starting next week. But the Russian government has attached conditions suggesting there's still negotiating to be done before a plan is put in place. Even if a plan is put in place, many experts say it's highly unlikely that armed groups like ISIL and Fatah al-Sham, formerly al-Nusra fronts, will respect it.